You're listening to the Cyberwire Network, powered by N2K. Imagine a world where you're always one step ahead of cyber threats, where your defenses are impenetrable because you see what others don't. Welcome to Team Cymru's Threat Intelligence Solutions. With real-time access to the world's largest threat intelligence data ocean, they enable you to turn the tables on attackers. Transform your security from reactive to proactive through accelerated threat hunting and incident response, made possible through automation. Empower your team with visibility and insights to start defending your organization like never before. Team Cymru, be the hunter, not the hunted. Learn more at team-cumry.com slash cyberwire. That's team-cymru.com slash cyberwire. My name is Patty Dillon. I'm uh, the product manager for anti-fraud solutions at SpyCloud. I guess really, like way back, um, because of my age, I'm not a spring chicken. It was just like being a wife and a mother. And um, so I I honestly uh, loved doing that too. But um, as my kids were, were growing up, I felt like I was really missing something. And so... Um, I went out and and found uh, a number of different careers that I enjoyed, but the one that was most interesting to me and I had the most passion for was preventing fraud. I've been doing this for, geez, uh, close to 20 years in the anti-fraud space, cybersecurity space. I had a small company in upstate New York, and it uh, served a number of small to medium-sized businesses. And one of those businesses was an online tobacco business. So there's many different types of tobacco being sold online now, but at the time it was very limited and the individual wanted to look for some sort of age verification solution I got into the data world and honestly was flabbergasted by how much information was out there and said, wow, if we're going to build this, I'd really like to make sure that it's more privacy oriented and people aren't required to put in the last four digits of their social or whatnot. Then, of course, now it's very standard not to have to use the last four digits of social for identity. Beyond that, we started uh, working on identity verification and One thing led to another, and everything sort of exploded in terms of, in my mind, from a fraud perspective, you know, how much we could help to prevent. I left that company and um, started working with uh, gift cards and then then was exposed to learning about money laundering. (laughs) That led me then to, uh, to underground data, understanding that, and um, then starting to work with SpyCloud on product development around that. And the product development started in the age verification piece of it and was in good stand all the way through my, my career. At SpyCloud, uh, we're building products that um, are leveraging, in my opinion, one of the most robust and uh, complete underground databases in the world. We're looking at different ways to use that data to try and help prevent fraud. Um, you know, understanding that breaches and leaks are really at the core of, of this online fraud. It's really more about identifying the risk of that identity versus just looking at devices to try and solve um, for fraud. It's been my experience that it's sort of a misunderstood type of data. There's really two core assumptions hindering 
the use of, of underground data to fight uh, online fraud. And first is that every user is equally exposed, which is not true. And second, that breach data is only valuable to criminals. Again, not true. So the truth that I'd like to sort of impart to the audience is that fraud prevention can benefit from that breached, exposed underground data. It really does provide signals of the user's risk, can help not only identify high risk, but it can also identify low risk. There weren't um, a lot of opportunities for me as a woman to take advantage of early on, so I sort of make, made my own. I guess the other pieces that I would like to change, if at all possible, would be that as a anti-fraud professional, a lot of times in businesses, the fraud division is a lot smaller than sort of like the, the business growth division. And that disparity can really overtax the people in that fraud division who are trying their hardest to make things right on one side. I believe that being able to share the stories and being able to share um, the, the things that have been successful in preventing and what the types of attacks were that are, are happening are so important. Everybody has this weakness. And the more that we can share with others of how we've remediated those weaknesses, the stronger that we're going to be in the fight against, you know, the cyber crimes and the fraud. Anybody that's looking to get into this type of industry or, or career, you know, you need to align with the mission. Also having a desire and a passion to prevent the, the fraudulent cyber attack kind of events. And if you have that and read insatiably and network with people, there's definitely an opportunity. I have always been a person who said, if you don't try, you'll never know. I did have a very good support system and it made it much easier, certainly, than maybe somebody that wouldn't have had that support system. But I don't feel that I would have been as fulfilled had I not taken that leap. This episode is brought to you by Palo Alto Networks, the leader in cybersecurity. As AI-driven attacks increase, organizations can't afford to have network security that's stuck in the past. Discover how Palo Alto Networks can help you predict what's coming and proactively secure against it with a zero-trust, AI-powered network security platform built to secure whatever, whenever, wherever. To learn more, visit paloaltonetworks.com slash network security platform. <laughs> 